give you a, a good message from the Word of God. We know tonight we have coffees in him. Uh, he's a very smart individual, and uh, we're glad to have him. And I can sit back sometimes and I wonder when I hear him speak how he is able to retain all those, everything that he's speaking on in his mind. And I just, I don't know how he does it, but he does it. And uh, we are just glad tonight. We're just going to ask him to come and, and speak to us. weather and this beautiful evening and it's so good to have everyone that has come tonight for this service. So thankful that you have taken time out of your evening and to come to be a part of our service tonight and it's such a privilege to have you here tonight. And the pain of, of trying to get your breath as you had to pull yourself upon the nails in order to take a breath and then let yourself down. And what would happen generally is you became so exhausted that you couldn't pick yourself up on the nails to catch your breath and you would literally suffocate there on the cross. Death by a crucifixion was the most excruciating death known in, uh, in, in, in human existence. It was the most degrading, it was the most painful, it was the most horrific way a person could die. But Jesus chose to die upon the cross. He chose to die upon the cross for your sins and my sins so that we would not have to die but that we could be set free. Now, Jesus' death upon the cross, that story impacts every person who hears it. But it impacts us in different ways. The Bible says for those people who believe, that cross becomes something precious and something that is, that is most uh, admirable to us, that we realize that Jesus Christ gave His life so that we could be set free. But to those that are, are that some the preachers of the cross, the Bible said, is foolishness to those that perish. They do not see the value of the cross. They do not view Jesus as being one who died for their sins and that His, his death on the cross is the only one that can save, can save them. But one thing for certain, you will never hear a message about the cross and it not affect you. Some will not believe, but some will believe. But everyone is affected by the preaching of the cross. I want to draw your attention to Jesus upon the cross. And here in his weakened state, he has been scourged. He's unable to carry that cross beam of 75 to 125 pounds to, go to Galgalta. And as a result of it, another has had to carry it for him. When they reach that place where he is to be crucified, the Bible says that prior to him being nailed to the cross, the feet of Jesus, uh, the, the hands and feet of Jesus before he is nailed to the cross, Matthew 27, verse 33 and 34 says, When they came to the place called Galgalta, that is to say the place of the skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and he tasted thereof, he would not drink it. Matthew says that Jesus was given this vinegar, which was a sour wine that was mixed with, with gall, which was a narcotic that was used to give to the individual who was to be crucified just prior to them being nailed to the cross so that it would deaden the pain of the nails going into his wrists and his feet. But the Bible said that when Jesus realized what it was, full pain of the cross, not willing to take any painkillers. When Jesus tasted, after Jesus was crucified and hanging upon the cross, the second statement that he made was this, I thirst. I thirst. Thirst is, of course, according to the dictionary meaning, is a dry, uncomfortable feeling in the mouth that is caused by having not had anything to drink. When you lack water, when you lack having something to drink, of course your mouth